Hey there, welcome back to Owl Dragon Adventures. I'm Scott Kegler. And I'm Rob McPherson. And this is our review of Foundations of Rome. So again, this is uh, Foundations of Rome. This is by Arcane Wonders, uh, designed by Emerson Matsushi. I apologize if I'm saying that incorrectly. Uh, this is a, with the expansion I have, a one to five player game. The base game, I believe, is a two to four player game. Uh, essentially, it's a robust polyomino game. Yeah. With a lot of variant rules depending on the copy of. And I am proud to say that its presence on this table is like 90% my fault. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this game is not available at retail. It is only through the Kickstarter campaign or retailers or ones that had yep. bought copies so to have their store. So if you want a copy of this after watching this, check your friendly local game store. Give them a call. I know ours in um, Newington, Connecticut has a bunch of copies of this. Mm -hmm. Um, I think this flew under some people's radars. Uh, it shouldn't. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, they had the campaign like the last year, the year before. Yeah. Uh, it was a. I think it was a little late, like most of the games right now. Um, uh, but it. So Robin saw. I pointed out to me. I'm a huge history buff, and mm -hmm. I love Roman history as well, and the architecture particularly. I, I got to visit it over 20 years ago. It was beautiful. Uh, essentially, in the game, as I said, is that polyaminoes. You're taking turns. Very simple, as large as this box is, it's a very simple game where you are playing uh, these architects, the foundation of Rome, building everything out on a grid. You either are taking money, buying lots, and on those lots you've bought, you are then putting these buildings. And when I say buildings, you are putting these physical resin copies. We'll put a... a yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, there'll be a... Yeah. So you're probably looking at some right now. Yeah. Listening to me, these are the beautiful buildings here uh, you're, you have. Uh, each of you have a, a matching set of the starting buildings that are either going to be uh, residential buildings, civic buildings, commercial buildings, and laying them out on this shared grid of Rome, putting them out in a way that scores points. Uh, basically, your your residential score you points on population. Your commercial buildings get you money and victory points, and you yep. also get victory points off of civic, which matters how you place them next to each other. That's a high-level overview of the game. Sure. Uh Let's dive into yeah. Let's dive uh, into the discussion here. So gameplay. So uh, this game plays again has a in, I think an intimidating box size, intimidating setup, but the gameplay is fantastic uh, for such a large box. And this is just the cover of the game uh, because it weighs so much to move it over from my shelf. Each player has their tray, as we showed you. Uh, you can have this game set up for a group that knows how to play it. Not even doesn't maybe not know how to play it in like three to five minutes. Yeah. You pull out the trays, hand them to everyone, and you just jump in. You set up yep. the game. takes very little time. You agree on what variants you're playing with because mm -hmm. it has a lot of modular variants. Yep. Uh, I think we've agreed that we would probably – we'll do it once, but we'll probably never play with all of the um, the expansions and variants because it, it complicates a very beautiful game. Yeah, I mean it's, it's one of those things too. It just it, Yeah, it's, it's just easier to uh, – um, decide on two or three and yeah. then get the gameplay out but we play we haven't played with every variant so far we played with most of them uh i think the variants are great they add a lot to it it reminds me of like a light but heady game like uh that time you killed me mm -hmm. where you can just add these variants and they they, yeah. they they mix it up quite a bit and it has that as a polyamino has that abstract feel to the game but i i had so much fun with it, just building it, even without any of the variants the first time. Yep. Then as we added them in, like the trading aspect really speeds the game up right. and gives a nice little negotiation, which I love as a mechanic. Um, I had such an excellent time with it. Uh, we've played uh, three full games so far. Uh, I'm going to try the solo. Um, I would play it with five players, but I think the sweet spot's going to continue to be a three to four player game for me. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm a little afraid of you trying this solo because you're going to come back to me and tell me that you loved it solo <laughs> and I'm going to be out $250. I mean, I went through the Automa, like the, the There's a secondary box you can buy to play it solo. Yep. It, it's okay. Um, it, I don't think... It, I think it was. It clearly is an afterthought. It's a side box um, sure. by an additional designer. Uh, I think I, I want to talk to people and watch myself you know, build this cool little yeah. uh, uh, miniature roam. Whereas I think just because of the way it plays out that it's going to feel very much like what I'm loving lately, which is the roll and write stuff where you're yeah. doing the grid and the, the placement. And so I think it might scratch an itch that I have, which 
It scares me. <laughs> uh, so for gameplay, I, I it's a high for me. I think that you get the most out of though that gameplay by having all of the yes. variants, but because of having that options, the base game is 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 really fun as that again that polyamino yep. uh, puzzle game. But I love having the trading, the the, Monuments, the monument the expansion, objectives. the objectives, uh, other aspects, invocations. I actually and... missed the uh, the invocations last night when we played it. We didn't do the invocations. Yeah, they were fun. They added a lot yeah. to the game. They also extend the game a little bit. So like, yep. that's, all the variants are going to do things like that to the sure. game. Uh, yeah, no, I'm definitely going to be a high on gameplay as well. Um, I For exactly the reasons that Scott had been saying. It's, it's such a fast jump into game. Um, even the first time you were ever played, like you have maybe three turns that you're like, what, what, what am I, what am I doing? And then you're like, oh, okay, I'm doing this now. Um, it's just, it's so much fun to play. I will play this any night. Um, yeah. It's got a crunchy game size, but it's not a crunchy game yeah, you, at all. You it's can like, knock out a base game of this in less than an hour. Oh, easy. Like easy. particularly as you get people that know it. Cause you're just, yep. you're flying through it. Uh, it's just, yeah, it took us an hour to play a game last night. That was the two of us who knew how to play and one other person who didn't know how to play. So we were still teaching a bit. And so that slowed it down. I think three people who know how to play it, even with invocations and a couple of the extra hours. Hour. Hour. Yeah. Cats. Yeah. Uh, next is accessibility. Uh, this game is so accessible. So yeah. it, even with the, all the variants, because you, again, you can say like, what are we going to play with? We can, I can yep. just introduce you with nothing and play this game vanilla Yep. Uh, and still have a really good time and a beautiful time building this game. As I mentioned, accessibility, you can uh, basically open up the box, hand everyone their tray Explain what we're doing. You have three choices. You can get money. You can buy a lot. Get money. You, you can spend money. <laughs> you can get money. You can spend money. Or you can take one of your buildings from your tray and put them on the board. Yep. Very simple. Yeah. Uh, and then you're and then you roll. And then as far as rule books, I think it has a fantastic rule book. Yeah. Um, and the concept of just being like, oh, we're trying to like build in here and uh, make you know you can only build where you have lots that you've bought, and you're gonna have sure. little the little pegs to designate what you own. Uh, the hardest energy bonuses that's the probably the hardest hardest part, part of, of the game is probably scoring and but not even that hard no uh i would say the Laid hardest right out, the hardest buildings to start to get the strategy like any abstract game uh teaching you the rules is easy yep. learning the strategy is hard yeah uh the civic buildings are the hardest part because to your point like it's not only how they score but how to think where i when i should put down a civic building yep but i i love that type of thing that's why i love abstract games yep uh so I think it's still highly accessible. I could, I think, like my my son who's going to be eight could be playing this in pretty soon. Like it's not that yeah. complicated of a game. Yeah, no, I, I got to say it's a high accessibility for me too. Um, it's probably one of the most accessible games that we own. Like it's honestly of its, weight, of its or of its uh, presence. Yeah. Uh, I actually no, I think it's one of the most accessible games that we have. Like this is on the level of ten in terms of accessibility. No, yeah, you I can teach you. it in three minutes. Um, again. A minute to learn, a lifetime to master. Was right. that Onitama's uh, catchline? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, it's the same like level of things. It's just super, super accessible. They did a great job with it, but at the same time, it's just beautiful. Yeah, I think like that's a funny example too. Like, uh, including setup, I bet you I could almost have this setup in the time it takes to set up Onitama, maybe a little bit longer. And we could teach two tables. Well, to that's play. only because you have to treat the hernia on the way to the table. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that's probably just the <laughs> physical weight of it. But I think you could probably have two tables up and running of two players playing on Tama and a three player playing of this and teach the rules about the same amount of time. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's crazy how fast for such a large box, as you can see here on the table. Um, my table groaned uh, when I put it down. Yeah. So um, it's accessibility. So yeah. high, high accessibility, as yeah, we yeah. said. Um, design. I think it's a very pretty game. I like the style of it. I think the box is very eye-catching with this uh, um, uh, kind of uh, uh, almost feels it looks like a nice painting on there with, yep. this, with this bold gold seal that catches you. Uh, the design of the actual game is just stunning. The 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 miniatures of all the buildings are great. Yep. Um, I think the I like all the card art is very uh, pretty. I would say crisp. Um, it's yeah, because the cards are they're. They're temporary. You pick them up so that you know you have the deed, and then they, they go in a pile that you just use for yeah. when we screw up turn orders. Yeah. <laughs> the design of the uh, the box itself and the oh. organization and storage solutions of this game, oh my god. Like, again, I with all love, it's like, hey, come on. Like, this is a pretty yeah. cool way to do this. Um, yep. 
like his come on games. I I, I love their games, but so, they're getting they're getting better. They're getting better. Uh, but like this is a beautifully designed. Uh, box and we do recognize that this level of um and and you'll see a picture here of what the organization looks like. Um, it costs extra money, so it's a bespoke add on. It's so worth it for some games, though. Yeah. And a game as light as this, I think if it took forever to set up with as light of a game, it would turn us off. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, or just, it wouldn't get to the table that much, and yeah. this is going to affect other things I talk about later on this game. But yep. I love the design. The fact that I can hand you your tray, I'm like, this is everything you need. Another thing I love that, I know we talked about scoring, is probably the hardest feature of this game on accessibility. The design is brilliant in that when you remove all of your, your mm-hmm. buildings and place them on the grid... Any scoring elements, like remembering what your population is, what your uh, civic abilities are, yep. what your money is at the yeah, time. Yeah, your victory points that you get at the all end of each it. round. You, don't just... need, you wouldn't have to even look at the grid necessarily to know most of your scoring. You could just read them off to the person scoring like, oh, yeah, my population is this. Yeah, it's, it's can... all revealed underneath the buildings. Yeah. The only thing you have to double check is like when you're looking at the civic buildings, what they're touching on the yep. grid. But very good design of the player board, player area. Yep. Um, I, I think that's fantastic. So that's going to be a a high from you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, High for me, too, on design. It's fantastic. Uh, The next is, and you can tell I I hate this game. Uh, (laughs) The next is quality. Like, again, there's... You've you've seen the the miniatures by this point. You've seen the the case. Like, I don't even think we really need to talk about this. The quality is fantastic for the game. Again, Um, you're paying for it, which we'll get into. Sure. But it's... It's high fantastic quality, cards, quality. High quality cardboard, uh, high quality plastic <laughs> pieces. Uh, they're high quality, um, and this isn't a ding, but uh, having to add the and I get why they had to do it this way for um, the this the the designation oh, tags there yes. for the for the buildings. You have so to there's add them. one minor point of frustration at the beginning that I takes. I think my a thumbs while. still hurt. Like, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you got to push these little pe- pegs into the top of the buildings to designate if it's a green player and they're or a snug. purple player. It's and, a snug yeah. fit. Some and of them just pop right in, and some of them it's like. Yeah, I I had to take my razor yeah. to a couple of them to get them to get in there. Yeah, uh, but like it's it's a yeah. snug fit. Uh, only complaint about the setup of the sure. game. Um, but yeah, no quality for me is absolutely going to be a high. Mm-hmm. Uh, no question. Finally, value. So value, uh, this game costs with, so there's three options that were available at our, at our um, friendly local game store uh, if you did not kickstart. There was the Senator Edition, which is the lowest level. Yeah, they had like, it was like 150. There was a 250 version, which was like all the expansions without Sundrop or um, the Ink Wash. And then yep. the Ink Wash version was just 300. Yep. Um, so yes, that's a very expensive buy-in for a board game. Uh Especially a light board game. But there is a, like, an equivalent games like a, like a Come On or something like that. The weight of what you get in all the miniatures of yeah. an, like, if you did, like, an all-in on, like, Blood Rage or Rising Sun or right. Zombicide. Uh, about that weight, so you're in that range. That's why it's that that and cost. You, you get a massive amount of of plastic pieces here, like. Uh, but it's expensive. You can, you can see just how many little buildings that you get for oh, your and the money. metal coins in here. And stuff yeah, like the that. metal coins. Oh, that's the other thing. The senator edition does not have is metal metal coins. coins. Yeah. Um. So it's so I, I spent three hundred dollars on this game. <laughs> um. And my my wife stayed with Terry. me. Yeah, I was gonna say. Uh. But it's a. Uh, but this is a game that is going to have a lot of table presence for me. Um, so on value, I think, you know, I've already had three games. We figured out I'm about like somewhere between 80 and $100 an hour what I paid to play so far. And that's in the first week. First week yeah. uh, drop from that, from 300 to that. So I this is a game where I can get two of it probably knocked out with the right people two, three times if I wanted to play it in a night. We're just going to play this. Yeah, but, first night we played it twice in a row. But as Robin mentioned, I think this is going to be a warm-up cool-down game where you're like, we don't want to play just a quick card game for a yep. warm-up. We don't want to play uh, you know, something small. Uh, we want to play something impressive, but we have an hour. Right. Or we just want to jump into something. Because, again, the setup is quick. The I think it's going to make an attractive thing. Only complaint with it on the value side is that it's not a game that I'm going to get to travel with. What are you talking I, about? I know. Is someone coming to Gen Con with yeah, you? Yeah, I know. Uh, so like, it's just a game like that. It's going to sit here at my house. I wouldn't yeah. take it to someone's house to try it out. But it's a game where I could easily, I think, get a uh, 
newer gamer, someone that doesn't yeah. game a lot to play. I um, think you're going to see it pay for itself in six months. Yeah, but as much as any game actually pays but for I, itself. But I get that it's 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 going to eat up a lot. But like, there are other games where people pay two, three hundred dollars. I feel like that you're not going to get to it as much. Or um, yep. they're a lot of games this expensive are like campaign games and stuff like that, where right. it's like that's a you could get the value out of it for mm-hmm. sure. It's just that getting into the table all the time is tough. I mean, so to to that note, this this game is more expensive than what the retail of Frosthaven is going to be. Right, um, but Frosthaven is that's a commitment too. Yeah. Um, and uh, sorry if you hear that. That's my dog running around my house um, after a cat. If you hear that, we may cut this out. We may not. Anyways, give you a spot to come back to. So I, for all that said, uh, this is uh, for me a high value right now. Um, I was a bit of a. <laughs> a, a, a I wasn't planning on uh, making that decision when I came into the store, but Rob was like, he also knew like it had, this game kind of had my number. Yeah. Uh, but I went in. I'm glad. I fortunately I had some credit at my uh, friendly local game store. But yep. uh, I really excited about it. It's a high value for me. I'm enjoying the experience. I'm not having any buyer's remorse. Um, I'm glad I got the addition I did because I think I would have regretted not having some of the aspects of the yeah. game, like the fifth player option. Um, the only thing I'm probably buyer's remorse on is I don't know how much I'm going to get the solo. I'm glad I have it, sure. having the option, but I'm not sure how much that will see the... Because that's also another, I think, $15. Or so I, I'm going to say for value that I have spent $0 on this, so it's definitely a high-value game for me. Uh, no, it, it, but it, as, in if, reality. But if you though. had it... You, no, I mean, no, yeah. in reality, uh, it, to be completely blunt... I'm still on the fence. I might pick this up as a solo game because I love the tactile feel. I love the the Tetrisy feel to it as you play it. Um, it just it's really attractive to me. I think this is a game that that my wife would actually play with me. I think this will play fantastic at two players. Yeah, I think it's very pretty. We'll, um, we'll have to try it at two players. I yeah, think it, I think it will too. I think I think it still sings at three to four, but I, I think it could still be yeah. a good two player game. Yeah, I think with two player trading well no i guess you could still do trading it's just less less exciting yeah i think there's less yeah. than yeah but it, yeah but no yeah value is definitely gonna be high for me um uh yeah so that is where we landed a lot of highs on this one so uh for yeah. me foundations of rome and i don't haven't done this a lot this is a five out of five game for me um i really love this game i love that it is this massive experience with a low barrier to entry like it's just very attractive. Um, I'm kind of like already kind of like just falling in love with what's happening with this game and the uh, for a game that can be a bit not take thatty but competitive and because of the way the buildings you stole are. My deed. So there, not uh, to actually steal. We didn't play with the stealing mechanics. So there's like some hate. Dra- there's some, so there's like some hate drafting there. But like other than that, it's a very uh, calm game. Yeah. I put it there with like um, it's like a an evolved version of like project L yeah, where it's like, it's like, it's, it's very chill and you kind of play it. It's fun. It's pretty. Um, and I'm just kind of like in that puzzle mode. Um, meanwhile, you have, but unlike project L, you have this beautiful picture at the end of the game uh, sure. you, uh, for everyone to look at. Uh, it just, and, but again, I feel like if people didn't know the game walking by, they would still think it's this like, Oh God! What's this? This is game you're playing. It looks so complicated. Yeah, yeah. So definitely um, take a look at your friendly local games. What's your score, dude? Oh, sorry. My score is going to be a, it's going to be a five out of five. Also, uh, I, I really, really love this game. It's very solid. It's very light. It's it's very playable. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just a really good game. And as I started to say, like, don't be intimidated by the size or the price tag if you can afford it. Um, when you see this at your friendly local game store, it is a very light fantastic game and i hope that it gets a lot of love at the friendly local game stores ours as i said has a ton of them so uh, i mean if this interests you swing out or if it's there. a game you see on someone's shelf like this is a game like i mean don't be intimidated by the size if they have it be like hey can we, can we play that real yeah. quick uh because again i, I think it's someone who has it, it's going to have hopefully the passion about it as well um sure I, i'm hoping that this one stays uh, available because i i would love yeah. it to, I, it's a game that deserves to get played because of how light it is um i i hope that they do at some point go like a full retail version and just to get people in the sure. mechanics of it um i, I will cherish my deluxified version yeah, i was gonna say i could see a retail version hitting where they the buildings are just on cardboard 
Um, Cardboard or like a simplified version of them. Um, It would make me sad, but I think that the gameplay is so strong it would still sing. Yeah, it could still be like a really good like $60 game or $80 game. Um, But yeah, I I absolutely adore this game. Um, I'm looking forward to getting many more plays of it. So that's uh, that's Foundations of Rome by uh, Arcane Wonders. Um, Great little uh, (laughs) impulse buy. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, we'll see. I would love to see what other yeah. games in this kind of feel or genre Arcane Wonders will do. I've loved a lot of their other games. Mm-hmm. I think it's funny that we we, we called out um, Onitama earlier as two games to play, and I totally forgot that. Oh right, yeah. Onitama is a Arcane, Arcane Wonders. Wonders game. Yeah. So I was like sitting there comparing. I'm like, wait, they're the same publisher. Yeah. But like, I would love to see more of this abstract ish, but like large feeling games yeah. by Arcane Wonders. Uh, great quality. Love playing it. I hope you enjoyed this, and we wish you good luck with all of your board game adventures. Thank you for joining us on ours. Don't forget to like and subscribe if uh, you like the content you're seeing. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks.